to introduce today's topic, what I want to do is call your mind back to something you learned about right angle triangles before trig came on the scene. What was the first main thing that we spent lots of time doing in, uh, in year eight to do with right angle triangles? Pythagoras. Pythagoras, very good. And we love Pythagoras because we're good at it, right? And you've been using it ever since and we keep on using it. Pythagoras is a wonderfully versatile theorem. Okay? Now I actually want you to remember, when you see questions like this, you often see the same numbers over and over again as the lengths that come up in right angled triangles. Um, the same numbers seem to get recycled repeatedly. Three numbers for three sides. Can anyone give me an example of three numbers you would hear a lot? Three, four, and five. Three, four, five is the most common one, but there are others as well. What else do you get apart from three, four, and five? One, two, three is not a right angled triangle. Someone give me another one. Oh, close. 5, 12, 13 is another one. 5, 12, 13. Uh, 12, uh, 8, 15, 17, maybe. Um, 7, 24, 25. Anyhow, my point is... I'll just wait for everyone's attention. When you're ready, girls. My question to you is, why is it, why over and over again, for all of the millions and billions of numbers that are out there in the world, why do we keep giving you the same ones over and over again? Here's why we keep getting the same ones. If, for example, you just choose very slightly different numbers, okay? You guys know Pythagoras. Can you work out what the hypotenuse will be in this case? Okay, so here, when you square this, you get 9. You square this, you get 36. 36 plus 9 is 45. So what does that have to do with the hypotenuse? It's the square root of 45. Now, the square root of 45 is the square root of 45. You can get a decimal expansion for it, but it's a disaster. What did you say it was, Tuition? 6.7082. Okay, thank you very much. And the decimals go on forever. Okay, so this is a, what, what do we call these numbers, right? When this decimal goes on forever and never repeats, it has a name, Mustafa? It's a third, right? An irrational number, it's just gross. It's, we don't want to deal with them. We want to try and avoid them, okay? Usually when we're assessing you guys on Pythagoras' theorem, we're not about assessing you on this. So we keep the numbers nice and neat. Now, in trig ratios, you've got a similar kind of thing, except it's not sides. It's angles. There are certain angles that pop up in right angle triangles over and over again, and they give you nice numbers for your trig ratios for sine, cos, and tan. So I'm going to tell you what these nice numbers are. Just like with um, Pythagoras has his three sides, conveniently, there are three angles. So three nice angles. As we will learn later on, there are actually more, but these three are the ones that come first. They're 30, 45, and 60. 30, 45, and 60. Now, why should these be the angles that come up over and over again? As we draw some triangles that include them, you will see why. 30 degrees, 45, 60. Um, this one has come up quite a few times. Can you get your calculator out? Get your calculator out. And I want you to test out for me. You might even remember. What is sine of 30 degrees? Sine of 30. It should be exactly a half, which is weird because usually if you try sine of anything, even sine of these numbers here, you get some weird decimal rubbish out there like this. Okay? So this guy is kind of like the nicest ratio out there. It's equal to exactly a half, which means that, just like with Pythagoras, I can draw a right angle triangle that has this at its core. What will the right angle triangle look like? I need some more space. Underneath this, I want you to draw a triangle where you've got an, a 30 degree angle, but opposite, you can actually measure this out. Opposite your angle, you've got a side that's one length, and it could be one centimeter, or it could be 10 centimeters, or something like that. And you've got a hypotenuse that's exactly twice as long. Okay? So for example, I might measure out in my book uh, a length, maybe three centimeters, okay? And I'll make this guy the opposite side, okay? Where would the hypotenuse go? It would be like over here, right? Yeah. And I want it to be, if this guy's three, then how long do I want the hypotenuse to be? Six. Double it is six. So go ahead, get your ruler, you'd twist it around, and you draw it so that that 
was a six centimeter line. That would be the hypotenuse. If you've done that, what you should find is when you complete the right angled triangle, what you'll find is that this angle over here has to be 30 degrees. You had no protractor, but if sine 30 equals a half, then opposite I hypotenuse, three on six is a half, okay? So if this is the case, um, this is my one side and this is my two side. Um, I now need to use Pythagoras again to find out what the last side is. Now we were trying to avoid thirds before, but with trig what we're looking at is nice angles. So I can work out what this last side is. This squared is going to be four, this squared is going to be one. So what will this side be? The square root of three, right? Because if it's the square root of three, then a squared plus b squared will be one plus three, which is c squared. Does that all fit? Does that make sense? So from here, I've got sine 30, but I can also get all the other things as well. I can get cos 30 and I can get tan 30 just by looking at the sides in the triangle. Where's cos 30? Which pair of sides am I interested in? I'm interested in the adjacent and the hypotenuse, right? Sokatoa. So it's going to be adjacent on hypotenuse, which is root 3 on 2. Now, it looks a bit weird because it's got a square root in it, but this is an exact value. When you go in and you punch cos 30 into your calculator, go ahead, do it. When you put in cos 30, it doesn't look like anything you'd recognize. But Pythagoras tells us this has to be root 3. So Sokatoa tells us this has to be root 3 on 2. Have a look at tan now. Which sides am I interested in for tan? Opposite over adjacent, which is going to be 1 on root 3. And you can go to your calculator, you can type in tan 30, and then the person next to you can type in 1 on root 3, and sure enough, you'll get all the exact same decimal places all the way to the end. Okay, so sine 30, cos 30, tan 30. Your calculator can give you decimals, but we can get the exact values even with the thirds. Okay, so that's much more powerful.